themselves and there's okay. a chart of numbers on there of the point system sure so percentages are still part of it no matter what class you're in mm -hmm. yeah definitely we talked about some measurements you got to be real precise with those right yes. yeah what other kind of math you do if you take a test in mr mosley's class what's on that you can't tell the specific question because you give it away, right? But what kind of things is he asking you about on your test? So most of the questions are <clears throat> where you read it and you do some problem solving. Yeah. So you have to imagine yourself at the scene. You have to imagine yourself the being the person. Mm -hmm. Um. That's like. <laughs> so you got to know some numbers, right? But I'm assuming you probably also also have to be able to express yourself too, right? So do you have to do some writing on the test that he gives you? Yes. Um. A lot of times we have to talk about like the rights that people have and um like how the government takes care of everything and the process that happens whenever you go to court and right. what judges do what the judicial does um is you no know, it's important to like stay by the rules even if it's like sometimes feel like it's wrong yeah. or you want to help another person but you have to stay on Got to follow the law. Got to follow the law. That's it. And then, of course, once you're done with the exam here, then we have a physical part to the class too, right? Yeah. So when we come back, we want to make sure that you can show us part of the physical part of this class. It's going to be really interesting. We're not going outside in the rain, but we're going to go to a place where they can show us the physical part of law enforcement, and we'll do that in our next segment. Back to you, Mike, in the studio. All right. Thanks for that, Scott. wonder if they're going to... Uh like do something, yeah. you know, like have Scott be the guy that, yeah. you know, whatever. That'd be fun, because we always have you out there. Yes, and, uh, so it's his turn. Doing all sorts of things, so it'll be Scott's turn. Anyway, we do have uh, phone tutors available until 5.30. We have Miriam in studio, a fifth grade student from Hart Elementary. Hart, it is, correct? Yes. Okay, I almost forgot who was in here today. <laughs> I knew it was Miriam, but I almost forgot what school you went to. So, you ready to do some more work? Yep. All right, okay. back to the board. Come on. We're going to simplify another expression. So we're going to go ahead and work together and make up an expression. All right, so start over a little further to your left. And Miriam, come up with a number. Just write it up there. All right, I'll go minus two. Let's open some parentheses. Mary Lou, how about you let Miriam know what you want everything in the parentheses to be? Okay, so let's do a three. Uh, minus four and close parentheses and then let's do a plus 5x uh, minus three plus 6x Okay. Where do you think you need to start? Parentheses. Yes. Okay, so let's bring down everything else then. But before, okay, before we do, before we bring down everything, is there anything you can combine? We, the, when we talk about expressions, we talk about combining numbers. What do you think you can combine? Um, I think I could combine five and one. Okay, but what is next to that five? X. An X. So can we really combine the five X and that one? No. No, because that one doesn't have an X on it, does yes. it? What else has an X on it that you can combine? Six. Very good. Can we combine this and this? Yes. We can. And what does that equal? That would be... 11x. That would be 11x. Okay, so let's put a plus 11x next to that negative 1. Anything else that you want to combine or should we bring everything else down and check it out? Go from there. Um, bring everything else down. Let's do that. Okay, let's bring down the 8 and the minus the 2. What do we need to put around this negative 1 though? Okay, let's do that. And there's one more number that we need to bring down, and what is that? Three. Okay. But what's in front of the three? Negative. Yeah, let's bring that down. Okay, now what do you want to do? What should we do first? Uh, we have, we still have some parentheses, right? But those parentheses deal with what? <coughs> Negatives. Negatives, but does it deal with adding or subtracting or multiplying or dividing? No. 
What does that mean again when a number is oh, next to it? Multiplication, right? But let's look at what's in front of that two. A what? Uh, is that a minus sign? Yes. What's in front of that one? Negative sign. Do you think that negative sign, and that's going to be a negative sign as well? Yes. What do you know about multiplying two negatives together? Um, if I multiply two negatives together, it turns into a positive. Pew, right. That's right. So this is going to be a positive, right? So we need to multiply that first, okay? Yes. So what is negative 2 multiplied by negative 1? Negative 2 multiplied by negative 1 is positive 2. Very good. So let's bring that down. And let's just go ahead and bring down your 8. And let's bring down that, everything at the back end there. Starting at the plus sign. We need all of that. So now what else can you combine? Um, because we're just now into adding and subtracting, huh? Yes. Okay. Um, Something really simple. Simple, simple. Look at the I front. I can combine 8 and 2. Yes. And what is 8 plus 2? 8 plus 2 is 10. Very good. Now what else can you combine with that 10 that you just got here? Um, I can combine whoa, the 10 with the 11. Can we though? What's oh, no. next? No. Why? Because um, you can't. Um, what doesn't this 10 have that that The 11? 10 does not have the x. Thank you. It doesn't have the variable. But there is something I can combine with the 10. Um, the negative 3. Yes. What is that? Um, that would be... What's 10 take away 3? we we'll just look real quick. We got our 10, right? Mm -hmm. Let's take away 3. What do oh, we yeah. get? <laughs> what do we get? 8. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Mm. Seven. Five, six, seven. 7. Okay, so can we combine anything with this? Is it by itself? Um, yeah. Yes. Okay, so let's bring that 11x down. Just bring right. it down to here. Right here. Yeah. So we have 11x, and then what was that number that was left again? 7. Was that a positive 7? Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so let's put a plus 7. And there you go. Let's real quickly look at this one more time, okay? First thing is we, you took care of the parentheses, yes. right? 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Yes. You combine in your like terms. Yes. Gave us 11. And then we took care of our multiplication. Yes? Yes. We brought it all the way down, simplified it all the way down to where we could still combine like terms, which are 8 plus our 2 minus our 3. Yes. And all the way down to where we can't go any further because why again? Um, because another number has to have an X right next to it um, or it can't be used. Right, because this means what operation again? Um, multiplication. And we can't multiply before we... Yeah. You're going to do really well next year. Really All right, ladies, well. we're going to move it one step further. Ooh, now ooh. we're going to work on simple, or solving a nice, easy equation. Okay. All right, so here we go. 6x okay. plus 12 minus 4x equals 48. Okay, so, Miriam, all that wonderful information that we just learned, now we're bringing it into here. So the first yes. thing we want to do is combine our like terms. And I'll yes. give you girls two minutes. Two minutes, real quick. What are we going to combine? We would combine 4x and 6x. Good. What's 6 minus 4? 6 minus 4 is 2. Write your 2x down. And bring down your plus 12. And our equals 48. Equals 48. Equals 48. Yeah, just put equals 48. So we're working backwards. We got to figure out what yes. that x is. So now we're working backwards. So the first thing I want to get, I want to think of PEMDAS backwards. Okay? So now I'm starting with adding or subtracting. Yeah. So we really want to get rid of this. So what's the opposite of adding 12? Um, subtracting. Okay, so subtract 12 from both sides. Subtract. I'll put one here for you. There you go. Okay, we're going to bring down our 2x. What did I say again this means? 2 what? what? Um, 2 times whatever x is. Equals? Equals 36. 2 times what number equals 36? Mm -hmm. 
Do you know? If not, there you go. Go for it. Eighteen. Eighteen. Guess what X is? Eighteen. Eighteen. Eight X equals eighteen because two times eighteen is thirty-six. Do you see how we use that prior knowledge of just simplifying the expressions, understanding that? And then we took it one step further, yes. and now we're putting it into an equation. And now we're finding out what that actual variable is. Good. You're doing all this next year, and you're already doing it now. And what yeah. I'll do is I'll give you ladies one more moment and talk a little bit about balancing the equation. Okay and some of the steps in there. So I'll give you another moment to okay. uh, talk a little bit about that. Because this is an equation, okay? Yes. Equations is like a balanced scale. You know, balanced scales in science. Yes. I have a weight of 48 on this side, okay? This side also has to equal 48. 48, exactly. That's what an equation is. It's a balanced equation, okay? So we need to make sure that this side is going to equal 48. You're yes. telling me that x equals 18. So real quick, if x equals 18, okay, we would plug in 18, 6 multiplied by 18, plus 12, minus 4 times 18, and when we work this whole thing out, Guess what it's going to equal? It better equal 48. 48 because we need to make sure it balances on that side. Yes. All right, there and you then go. And maybe one more thing. Just talk about how you had 2x is equal to 36. Yes. Why divide? Because some students will look at that and go, well, I'm going to subtract 2x. Well, we have or to subtract 2. What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. Division. What's the opposite of subtracting? Addition. Addition. So when we're working out an expression, an equation, okay, yes. remember I said we're actually working backwards, backwards, okay? We know that this is multiplication, right? Yes. But I'm working backwards. I have the answer. Yes. But I got to find the missing piece of the puzzle. Yes. And that's why what we're doing here, by dividing by two on both sides, we have to work backwards to get to our answers because of our fact families. Yes. There you go. All right. Nicely done. Hey, we do have phone tutors available until 530. We have one more opportunity to head out to the ROC, visit with Scott, and see what's going on in law enforcement. Hey, thanks, Mike. We're back here live at the ROC. And we've heard a little bit in the last couple segments about the classroom side of law enforcement. But we all know there's a little bit more to law enforcement than just stuff in the books. So there's another whole aspect of this program. Tony, we want to know about the physical part because we know that law enforcement is a physical occupation. Very much so. So what do you teach these young people in law enforcement that's physical? I mean, this is a new type of class that they're going to have, a little different than their um, you know, French literature class that they have at, at school, right? Very much so. Well, first of all, i got to say thanks to my good friend Mike Collier at the uh, Kern High School District because he is normally the person who I, uh, who we bring in and allows and he's much better at it than I am. Okay. But uh, all right. anyway, uh, uh, <laughs> but what, what, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do a, a search. And one of these searches is the standing search, standing modified search. And this search would be used for a person that you contacted potentially on the street. You don't know if this person is dangerous or not. And so uh, uh, all of our searches are done typically with a cooperative sub subject. And so Jackie is going to be the person who's being searched, and Kiori is going to be the person who's going to search her. All right, so we're going to start the search by having the cooperative person raise their hands up to the air. So they're going to, you're going to raise them higher as you can, higher. You know, while you're doing that, you're checking their waist to see if they see any guns visible or anything. Then you're going to have them turn around. Can you turn around? You're going to check the back waist of them. You're going to have them interlace the fingers behind your head. Spread your feet wider. So you have them spread your feet so when you come in, you're going to come in through the side. You're going to grab three fingers from the back of, the, of their hands. You're going to tilt them back a little bit, bring in with one leg. So you search the gun, bring them down. And then, bring them. and then right here, we'll come up, bring them. And then this part, if they try to roll out, we have them here. So I lift a bit, she feels a little pain. And then right here, we would do, thank you. We would handcuff them. And we have bring their other arm. 
and then do a little bit of handcuff. Very good, very good, you Well done, lady. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Your lower legs. Okay, so <laughs> in this position, we can also search the lower legs. We're going to grab the, can grab the handcuffs here. You just search. You got to search well. Make sure no other guns are anywhere. Check the ankles because it can have a gun on their, on their, in their socks. Make sure nothing's visible. You got no, no weapons to hurt you. Then you should back up. And then she gets to... <laughs> the cooperative suspect has been apprehended. Yes. <laughs> Good deal. Now, everything that you ladies did was really specific. Okay? Really specific. And the way that you go about teaching this, Tony, is, is with specificity, right? We have to do things in a certain order. And we have to do things with a certain... Uh, angle to them, right? And definitely, we, we were talking earlier a little bit about being off balance, making sure that the, the person that you're interacting with is off balance and that you are in control of that situation. So tell us a little bit about a couple of the things they did specifically that kept them in control. Very much so. Well, the, uh, the first order of business is always to keep not only the officer safe, but the subject or the suspect safe. Okay, good And point. so with that, what we want to do is we want to do a systematic search. And we do that systematic search by going uh, very slowly, very methodically, right. and going in angles that create safe for us as well as for them. Right, good deal. So we want everyone to be safe in this situation. And Absolutely. part of that is making sure you do things in a routine manner. That's why practice right here is gonna be the best experience to have, right? You're you gotta make sure you have some physical contact so you have a little bit of muscle memory Absolutely. once you get in the real situation. Absolutely. We've had a great time here. I learned a ton today. Thanks so much for your time. We want to make sure that you know that we appreciate you having us here. Ladies, thank you for your time today. Thank we want to make sure you don't forget do the math. And so we have this, this wonderful token of our appreciation. Thanks for helping us on do the math, right? And uh, I don't know if you have a tile wall yet, but if you do coming up soon, this could maybe be your first one. Well, this could be my first tile for my tile wall. I appreciate it very much. Yeah, thank you very thanks much. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. We had a good time out here at the ROC. All kinds of programs, but law enforcement certainly is thriving, and the young people are learning a lot of stuff. Uh, we will sign off for now. Mike, back to you in the studio. All right. Thanks for that, Scott. And thanks also to everybody at ROC. We've had a couple of opportunities to visit with uh, different classes out there. Yes. I know you've had an opportunity to go out there. We would like to take a moment to say thank you to Miriam for coming in today, our final guest of the year, since this is Pi Day 2018, our final live broadcast this year. Also, like to thank all the people behind the scenes that you don't ever see, the camera operators, audio technicians, people in the booth, phone tutors, everybody out and about, all the different schools and staff and things like that. And until we meet again, continue to do the math. Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Southern California Gas Company, California Resources Corporation, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, and the San Luis Obispo County Office of Education with additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, California Resources Corporation, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, and the Kern High School District with additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. We are live
today at the Boys and Girls Club on Niles Street and kicking off our 17th season. And we are here to do the best. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Do The Math. I'm Michael. And I'm Scott. Welcome back. If you are in Bakersfield and you'd like to be part of our show today, we would love to have you on the inaugural uh, show of the season for this 2018-2019 school year. Give us a call, 636-4357 if you're here in Bakersfield. If you're in San Luis Obispo, you can also call us. The number is toll free, 866-636-6284. You can even email us your math question if you have one. Do the math at kern.org. You can watch the show online, of course, at dothemathonline.net and social media. We are covered on those, whether you have Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or Twitter. We are located on all those sources. That's right. And I'm sure when 2020 gets here, we'll have another there you six go. of the resources that will be on <laughs> as well. Anyway, today is the first season or the first day of the 17th full season. Nice. And I think because we've got actually 17 and a half seasons because we started in the middle of a year. Should we round up? First year. We'll do the math. Yeah, so we can say the 18th, <laughs> but it's the 17th full season. All right. Anyway, the phone numbers are at the bottom of your screen periodically throughout the program. And as Scott said, if you're calling from San Luis Obispo County, that phone number is toll free. If you phone in, you automatically receive yourself Doc Bernstein's ice cream. Hey. And there's a special contest going on with a couple of schools over there. One Ocean View Elementary and the other is Grover Beach Elementary. Now both of those schools are going against each other. All right, little head-to-head matchup. Own little head-to-head yeah. contest here, and there's quite a little, uh, great little prize yeah. you know, for these guys. Nice. Whoever wins this thing, the top kids get a tour of the Doc Bernstein's Ice Cream Lab facility, ah. which is brand new over on the Central Coast. There and, you go. Uh, pretty big deal, and then the winner gets. A golden ticket. Whoa! I the golden ticket out on the uh, Charlie and the Chocolate tonight, Factory. But uh, it's just like that. Yeah. So the winner, the top student, will re be receiving a Sunday every month for a year. Wow! Nice deal. I like that. And a little help with the math I'll along tell the way. You right there. If they got twelve different Sundays, <laughs> I'm trying each and every one of those right there. They're gonna have a lot of friends too. <laughs> well, you know what? We have a very special guest in the studio. We're gonna be going out to the Boys and Girls Club with Mary Lou in just a little bit again. But first, before we get to all of that, let's first take a look at today's Math in the News. All right, and today's Math in the News has to deal with us. Hey. Do the math in the news. All right. So this was in the uh, Bakersfield the Life magazine the other day. This is the one that came out for September of 2018. And we can see here's the article, and we can see that uh, there we are right there. There we are. And uh, they're talking about do the math set to begin the 17th season on September 11th. So that is today, and it kind of just gives an overview of what the program is. So if there are people that are kind of new to the program, haven't seen it yet, tuning in for the first time, and they're like, hey, what's going on with this? Simply, it's a live interactive program. And on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, between the hours of 3.30 and 5.30, any student at all can call in to get a little bit of extra help with their math homework. Now, a lot of people think, well, this is just for kids in like elementary grades, junior high, and there are high school students as well. There are also students, older students, going to adult school, maybe uh, community college, going back to school, sure. changing careers, whatever yeah. it might be, uh, and just need to brush up a little bit on what they did right. a couple of years ago. So right. we're here for that as well. And we all know that too, when you are start doing some math and you get stuck on one problem, it's so frustrating sometimes you can't move on with get the assignment. On to the next one, right? Yeah, and so if they just give a call, we can help them out with that problem real quick, and they can get on with the assignment and move on to the next part of whatever they're they're assigned to do that evening. And if you're speaking with one of the phone tutors, you can take as long as you like right. with that phone tutor. Now, if you'd like to see it worked out on TV or on the internet, because a lot of students say, "Well, I don't have the cable anymore," or whatever the case might be, yeah. you can always catch us online at dothemathonline.net. There, you will find the website you can go to. Watch it streaming live. You can tell your family, friends, relatives. They can watch you at the same time. You can also go back 
to look at archived programs. So when you're getting ready for a test or you need to review yourself and it's Thursday, you can't phone us, right. and it's only on Tuesday and Wednesday, right. you can go back and look at that program once again. Yep. So we are here Tuesdays and Wednesdays for you. The sticker I put up here as well because each of the schools in Kern County will be receiving stickers, binder dividers, posters, things like that, different types of materials. And those materials will be sent to your schools and if you need more, simply give us a call. We'll send out as many as you need. So if you have new classrooms coming on, uh, some teachers want binder dividers only, and we didn't send enough of those, simply let us know and we'll send out the binder dividers. In studio with us right now, we have Bella. How are you? Good. Why don't you let everybody know what grade you're in and what school you attend? I'm in fifth grade and I attend at Stockdale Elementary. So you go to Stockdale Elementary and you're in fifth grade? Mm -hmm. Everything good with fifth grade? Yeah. Okay, that little hesitant <laughs> right there. So what's, what's the deal with fifth grade? What, what is the one thing that makes you pause for a moment? A lot of trying to get on schedule, trying to get my assignments on time. There you go. So a little bit of time management, right? Okay, yeah. well, you know what? As you continue to get older and move on in grades, that skill will become more valuable every single year. So as soon as you start learning to get everything done, and it'll take probably this year a couple of months to get it all set, okay. right? So you have to mm -hmm. kind of work at it a little bit. It's not like it's going to happen like that, yeah. right? Yeah. Because in fifth grade, you can start a lot of new things, like uh, band. Have you thought about that at all? Yeah, I'm starting band. You are? Mm -hmm. What instrument? I'm doing the clarinet. The clarinet. Do you know how to play it right now, perfectly? No, not technically right, but I'm making my own different kind of sounds. Well, there you go. Well, you see, because you have to practice at the clarinet, you have to practice at time management as well. Right? And the more you work on it, the better you get at it. And then life will be a lot easier for you. All right? Okay. You know what? We're going to go back out to the Boys and Girls Club in a couple of moments. But first, I want to just work on one of your problems. Are you ready to do that? Yeah. All right. Why don't you head on over to the board? And we're going to, because you brought in your homework. And mm -hmm. what we'll do is uh, we'll just ahead. go ahead and read the first one. All right. So the first problem is 24 times 21. Okay. But there's a certain thing we have to do with it. Uh -oh. So if you want to write 24 times 21 first, you can put that on the board. Oops. 24 times 21. Yeah, right. that's right. Okay. And you can write a little larger if you want. That way it'll be a little easier to see and work with the numbers. Okay. Now it says to draw an area model. Now do you know what an area model is? Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, and then it says, and then solve it using the standard algorithm. You're cool on that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so why don't you go ahead and do that? So draw an area model. Okay and then solve it with the standard algorithm. Aha, okay, so it looks like a big window. Mm -hmm. All right, what are we gonna do with this little box with a, with a cross in the middle? Uh, we're gonna break up these two numbers. Okay, so how do you do that? So you're gonna break up 24 okay. by doing 20 on the top. Oh and four on this side. Okay, so two numbers that add to? 24. Add 24, and how come you didn't pick 19 and five? Why'd you pick 20 and four? Because you're gonna have to use these ones to get an answer in these boxes. Okay. And at the end, you're gonna have to like add them all. Gotcha, okay. So what about the next one? What about 21? How do we break that one up? You're gonna break it up into 20, uh -huh. and then you're just gonna have that one um, yeah, so it looks to me like you're looking at the tens place in the first spot and the mm -hmm. ones place in the second spot. Same thing yes. here, right? Good. Yeah. Okay. So what do you do with that thing? We're gonna times these two. Okay. So we're still doing a multiplication problem like it says right here, right? Yeah. Okay. Just breaking it down easy. All right. Easily. We're gonna, after we do that, we're gonna do those two and continue on. Okay. Do you want to do it regular now or do you want to keep on going with the area model? Because I like what you've done there. We're gonna keep going. Okay. We're going to do 20 times 20, mm -hmm. but you can do 2 times 2, add the two zeros. Okay, sounds good to me. So 2 times 2 is 4, plus 2, wait, plus 2 zeros. 2 zeros. Which is 400. Good, okay, so where do you put that? You put those. Oh, I see, right in the middle of the here. box there. Good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's it, next? Like safe. Yeah, then keep it safe. Then you do 20 times 4, you do the whole numbers, you 
times the whole numbers and then add the zeros. That makes sense. So you're going to do 2 times 4, which is 8, uh -huh. plus the zero at the end, Okay. which means it's 80. Wow, looks good so far. I like it. What's mm -hmm. next? Then you do this bottom one times this times that. Okay, so what's 1 so times 20? 1 times 20 equals 20. Okay, that works out pretty well, and that so goes nice and safe in that box, right? Mm-hmm, it okay. goes safe in that one. And the last one? 1 times 4 equals 4. With no zeros? And no zeros. Okay. So you just keep it plain. Good. And what do you do with all those numbers? We had 24 and 21, and now we have four numbers. It looks like you're making this problem harder. Well, it might seem <laughs> harder, but once okay. you get to know the right. actual problem, you would get to use it. Hopefully it'll be easier. So what are we going to do with these numbers then? You're going to get the highest, the biggest number, Okay. and you're going to add them down from there. Okay. So you would go 400. 400. And then you're going to do 80. Okay. Yeah, 80. And we're going to do some addition on these ones? Mm-hmm. Good. What else is next? 20, and then you add that 4 at the end. That was a hard one, huh? You got the dotted line going on there. <laughs> How about we do this? Two. Oh, even I got a dotted line there. Okay, we know that's a 20. Maybe we'll put it up here. <laughs> okay. And what's the last number? Mm. That we have to add in there. What I'm do we miss, add miss from the box? Four. Four. Okay. So try right there on those little dots. See if you can make a four. Oh man, yep. that area does not like us, does it? I'll put that four way up here. And with all those dots, at least we can try to make ourselves a line. <laughs> so what do you do with all those numbers? You're going to add a plus sign uh -huh. and then add all those numbers together. Gotcha. Now, so if you add all those numbers together, would you get the same answer as if you just multiply these together? Yes. The same answer? Mm-hmm. Mm. You can check it at the end if you know how to do double numbers times double numbers. Do you know how to do that? Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's do the standard algorithm, just okay. like we were asked to do, and then at the very end, we'll check it with the way you did it there. We'll add them up together. Okay, so what do you do if you're doing the standard way? You're going to do this number right here. Uh-huh. You're going to add, you're going to times this, to that one and this one to that one. Okay. And then you'll get your answer. Oh, Good. Actually, you do this way. <laughs> That's all right. Ti one times the four and then one okay, times so the Okay, so one two. times four and where does that go? One times four is four. Good. And Just it watch goes out for that little piece there. Yeah, here. if you put your arm on there, it likes to make a box. And then one times two? One times two is two. Good. Where's the so two go? It's Good. like the same thing that you would do. like. Adding right. my basic Yeah, and look, we have 20 plus 4 is 24. That works out pretty well. Mm -hmm. What else? Then you cross this out. Okay, so you don't have the 1 anymore. I got you. No. Then you do 2 times 4, which okay. is 8. All right, and where do you put that? But you do, since this is a x, it's a technically supposed to be a 0. Okay. So you add the 0 underneath the 4. Oh, I see. And then you do 2 times 4, which okay. is 8. Good. And then 2 times 2 equals 4. Yeah. You just add it underneath. I like this. This is really working out well because mm -hmm. over here you had 480. 400 yeah. plus 80 is 480. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you want to do with this at the very end here? You're going to add these up together. Okay. And you'll get your answer. So All right. 4 plus 0 equals 4. Good. I'm going to see if I can make this go down a little bit. Maybe that'll be better. Try again. Okay. There we go. Four. I got better. And then. It 2 plus 8 equals 10. Good. So you would do 0 and then add that 1. Mm hmm. Okay. Good. And hopefully we know it's not 11, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. What's next? Then, since you have nothing with above the 4, then mm -hmm. you're just going to add that 1 to it. Okay. Which is 5. So your answer would be 504. So if you added those numbers that we put down at the very beginning of the problem, mm -hmm. would you be confident that that would be the same answer that we got here? Yes. How confident are you? Should we bet some money on it? You're pretty confident, I know. All right, let's add them up, and then we'll see if you got it, the same okay. spot here. It's a little wonky here. It is a little wonky, I agree with you. Four up top with, no ze with zeros yep. and nothing else, so you're just going to put... The four is straight on the bottom. Yep, look at that. So far, so good. Mm hmm. What's next? Then, uh, there's one zero right here, but you just had that two. So eight and two. Two and eight. Yeah. yeah. 
So you can add those two like we did over here. Yeah. Add that zero. Okay. And we got that one. one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Last one. One plus four. Four plus one is five. Good. It worked out well mm -hmm. for both of them. Nice job. That's supposed to be a big equal sign, but we'll just pretend like it is for now. Nice job. Well done. Well done, Bella. Like that right there. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tuners available until 5.30 on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Right now, we're going to go out live with Mary Lou at the Boys and Girls Club. We are live today at the Boys and Girls Club on Niles Street, and I have a whole bunch of new friends with me, and I'm going to have them introduce themselves to you. Hi, my name is Rafaela, and, I, and I go, I'm in sixth grade, and I go to Washington Middle School. My name is Daisy Flores, and I'm in fourth grade, and I go to Longfellow. My name is Caitlin, and I'm in fourth grade, and I go to Longfellow. My name is Isaac Corral, and I, and I am in sixth grade, and I go to Voorhees Elementary. Hi, my name is Clemente. I go to Longfellow Elementary. Hi, I'm in sixth grade. Hi, my name is Marley McNich, and I'm, and I'm in sixth grade, and I go to Longfellow. Hi, my name is Edwin. I'm in fifth grade and I go to Noble Elementary. Hi, my name is Ethan Flores. I'm in fifth grade and I go to Longfellow Elementary School. Okay, you guys, you ready to get going? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we were talking, and since we're all in fourth, fifth, and sixth, we know the most important foundational skills is. Multiplication. Yes, okay. it's really the basis to everything. And once you understand that, all your other math is going to be easy, right? But really, what is multiplication? What is it? Multiplication is the the uh, repeated of addition. Yes. Do you agree, Isaac? Yes. Okay, so do we all agree? Yes? It's just yes. repeated addition. Okay, so we were talking about a problem as simple as 3 multiplied by 2. Yes? Yes. And that's pretty much mental math for us, right? Yes. However, can you show me on your papers what 3 multiplied by 2 looks like in a picture? Okay. Go. So, put it right here. So, I'm going to put the first part. No, you said me, remember? No, but we're both going to do our, we're all three of us going to do our own cookie. Two rows of dough. Oh, not right there. No. Two rows of dough. 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 Good job, that other part too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what do we doing up here, gentlemen? Can you tell me what you're doing? We're making two rows of three uh, pizzas. Ah, we got some pepperonis going. I take it. Yes, mm -hmm. pepperoni pizzas. Okay. So how many total pizzas are you going to have then? Six. Okay. What did you guys do over here? Cookies. What did this group do? Can you explain? We made um, one row of cookies with two chocolate chips in each. Okay. So you have three groups of? Two. two. Of two. So how many total do you have then? Six. Okay. Show me that answer. Six. Because it's two rows. Of three. Of three, yes. Okay. Ladies, explain to us what you did over here. So we did two rows of, of three hearts in each row. Okay, so you, have, so you have two groups of three, yes. which is a total of yes. six. Yes. So is it fair that even though we all have something different, did we all come up with the same answer? Yes. yes. Okay, so this is pretty easy. Three multiplied by two, right? So I know in fourth grade, we start multiplying with double digits. Uh -huh. But is it still grouping? Yes. 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 So the one I'm going to give you is 12 multiplied by 13. 12 multiplied by 13. Let's think about that. It's 12 groups of what? 13. 13. 12 groups of 13. If you want to write on the same paper or turn it over, you may. Show me how in a picture format we can do 12 groups of 13 to get our answer. Okay. Go. So we can do right here 
Okay. So what's your plan see, first, gentlemen? I'm going to do 12 circles, wow. and then uh, I'm going to do make a one circle around it so it could be um, So if you have 12, you have one group. This is one group. Remember, write down the formula first. It's 12 multiplied by 13. Write that down so you have the equation. 12 multiplied by 13. Okay? Okay. So we know it's... So how many groups of these are you going to do if there's 12 each? That's what we have to do. 13. Write 12 multiplied by 13 on your paper. So, so what are we doing over here? We're going to do... Um, we're going to do boxes. We're going to do circles. In each, because if it's 12 rows, then we're going to go down 13 until there's 13 in each row. Okay. All right. Keep going. All right. What's our plan over here? What's my back group's plan? So we're going to do um, 13 rows with 12 boxes in each row. Okay. All right. So we're going to get started. So how do we know which row is which? Do we want to number our rows so we know where we're at? One. Two. Okay. Keep working. Okay, you guys changed plans. You changed plans, so what's our plan now? So we did 12 circles and we're gonna do, I mean, 13, 13 in each circle. Keep, get going. Get going. So again, with multiplication, what we just need to understand, it's just simply, what everybody? Yeah. Repeated. What is multiplication? Addition. Repeated addition. So as they're working, so they're going to continue to work and figure out our answer. And when we come back, they're going to have an answer for us. But we're going to continue with multiplication with multi digits. And we're going to show all the different ways we can solve these problems. So as they continue to work, I'm going to send it back to Mike and Scott in the studio. And we'll see you in the all right, thanks for that, Mary Lou. We'll check in on the kids at the Boys and Girls Club in a little while, see how they're doing with that activity. 636-4357 is that phone number. We do have phone tutors available most Tuesdays and Wednesdays throughout the regular school year. And when you phone in, that is an opportunity for you to see the problem worked out and maybe understand it a little bit better. So what we're going to do is right now go to the phones. And Ethan, how are you this afternoon? Uh, I'm good. And are you in 7th or 8th grade? I'm in seven. All right. And you're at Stern Middle School? Yeah. All right. As soon as you're ready, let's hear the math problem that you're working on. Excuse me? As soon as you're ready, you can go ahead and read the problem. Okay. David has to, uh, David and his two brothers deliver papers every morning. Each of them can deliver a paper every two minutes. And between the three of them, they deliver 147 papers. How long does it take them to deliver the papers? Aha, uh -huh. what a great problem. So I've written down some things, uh, Ethan, on the board here, just to make sure I got the details clear. It sounds like David and his two brothers. So how many people are delivering papers in this problem? Uh, three. Gotcha, so we're gonna write that one down. I think that's gonna be a pretty significant number we're gonna use here. And then we also know that each of them delivers one paper every two minutes. Okay, so we could probably make a rate on that. If there's three people, uh -huh. how many papers will be delivered in two minutes? Uh, in two minutes, there will be three. That's right, so three papers every two minutes. Good, okay. That's supposed to say minutes, but we'll figure that out. And then 147 papers at the end. So what do you think? Ethan, how, where do you wanna go with this problem? What do you wanna do first? Uh, I want to try to figure out, uh, by dividing, uh, three, my, uh, three divided by 147. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So we're going to do 147 divided by the three brothers. So we'll figure out what that's going on there. Okay. So if you divide three into 14, what do you get? Three into 14, I get 12. Yeah, that's right. 12. And the reason that you got 12 is because 3 goes into 14 four times. Good job. So do some subtraction. Hopefully you're working along here with me. 14 yeah. minus 12? It is 27. I mean, 2. Good. And then you brought down the 7. That's okay, buddy. You are working ahead of me here, and I like the way you're thinking here. So now we have 27. 3 goes into 27 how many times? 3 goes into 27. Let me see real quick. Oh, 
27 divided by 3? Uh, it's 27, actually. 27 divided by 3 is what? Uh, 27 divided by 3 is, I'm pretty is I was predicting for you there. You're right, the answer down here is 27, and the way that you got that was to divide or multiply times three. So at the very top of the problem here, what answer did you get to divide 147 divided by three? Ethan, you still there? So I think you may have been stuck when you were at the 27, saying 27 divided by three. Right. And I think, so you're still there, Ethan? Yeah. Okay. All right. So three times what is 27? Three times what is 27? I'm pr nine. Good deal. Three. And that's what I put up at the top there. That's exactly right. So I'm sorry if my question wasn't quite clear enough. So at the yeah. end of this division problem, Ethan, what did you get for an answer? Uh, I got 49. 49. Good job. So we're done, right? We're all finished? Yeah. No, 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 no. Wait. We got to go back to the beginning. Let's go back to the beginning and see what's going on here because 49 would be a wonderful answer because it'd be a nice simple step because what we would have is it must take 49 minutes, right? All done. Yeah. But let's look at the original problem. What did it say? It said they deliver uh, one paper every what? Every two minutes. Two minutes. That's right. So really we don't have 49 minutes. We have to do 49 times two. If they delivered a paper every minute, then we'd be done but we're not quite done because we've got to be every two minutes. So we want to know how long it's going to take them to deliver papers. Can you help me out to do 49 times two, please? All right, so uh, two times nine is 18. Good, and we're going to carry the one on that one. So two times four is eight, and uh -huh. we add the one, so that's a nine. There you go, so now I think we are in business here. We have 98 minutes. Now, if something took 98 minutes, is that usually the way you'd say it? Hey, this took me 98 minutes. No. Nah, so we need to do a little bit of work on this one too. What do you want to do to change this into some units that we think so, might work out better for us? So I want to uh, subtract it by 60. Good because idea. Because every 60 uh, minutes is an hour. I like that. So you're going to trade in some minutes for an hour. Okay, so if you subtract 60 from there, we're going to end up with one hour. I like that. But subtract 60 and see how many minutes you have left over. I'm pretty sure 28. Good. You got 8 minus 0 is 8 and 9 minus 6. Did you say 28 or 38? Yeah. I'm going to predict for you there too. What do you think, Ethan? you agree with me that it might be 38? Yeah. Good. Okay. So 1 hour and 38 minutes is what we're looking at for all three brothers to deliver all the papers. Uh -huh. Pretty good deal, nice job. Thanks for helping me out there. Nicely done, Ethan, and if you're still online, guess what, you don't have to wait an hour, 38 minutes. We are going to <laughs> deliver a fair ticket to you right away, so congratulations on that. You will be going to this year's fair startups in uh, about a week or two, I guess. Yeah, it's coming. So congratulations, first one going to the fair. 636-4357 is the phone number. We'll be back with more right after this. Today we're in Boron. We're at West Boron Elementary School, home of the Jackrabbits, and today we're here to... Well, today we're at West Boron Elementary. We've got some sixth grade students they're a little nervous right now, but we all are early in the morning because they're anticipating what's going to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way back, you guys, back to, I think you said, Sebastian, before kindergarten, correct? Which is where we learned our shapes. So, Libby, you're the one closest to me. You're the chosen one. Come on up. Why don't you grab a marker, any color you like, and draw a simple shape. So, what are some basic shapes that you learned when you were in kindergarten? A circle. A circle. So go ahead and draw a circle for me. All right. What is another shape? And if you need help, you've got some folks over there that can help you out. Okay. Um, a triangle. A triangle. All right. So go ahead and put a triangle up there. Now, being in sixth grade, there are different types of triangles. Do you know some of the different types of triangles right now? And you can always ask for help if you need. 
Do you guys know any different types of triangles? An acute triangle. An acute triangle. What makes a triangle an acute triangle? And it has like an angle to it. Okay, so they like have not angles. Not like a flat angle, really but a slanted angle. Really like that. It's really small, like very compact, like, yeah. like that. So when you say small, compact, how can we better describe that in, as far as geometric terms? So an acute triangle would have an angle... Less than 90 degrees. Perfect, less than 90 degrees. So there we go. So we've got acute triangles, we've got equilateral triangles, obtuse triangles, all sorts of things like that. All right. What about another shape? Let's get off the triangle thing. Square. Square. There you go. So those are three basic shapes. All right. Nicely done, Libby. Thanks for that. You can come on back over and have a seat. So what you guys are going to do is you're going to go back and you're going to think about how to describe shapes and where they are. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a picture and you're going to look at it and then you're going to have to write down the description of it. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, so here's a practice thing for you. All right. If I, if I had this, and you wanted somebody else to draw that, what is the first thing you would have them draw? What would you have them draw? A square. Okay, so you might say, draw a square. All right, now somebody draws a square. Okay. Should the square, could it look like this? No, because that's now a rectangle, isn't it? Okay, so you want to be descriptive. All right, so you would first say draw a square. Then what could you say? Because remember, a person can't see this. They're only going based on what you write. Then draw a triangle off of the side of the square. Okay, so if I did this, I draw a square, and then I draw a triangle off to the side of the square. Could it look like that? We don't want it to look like that, but if you simply say draw a square and draw a triangle off to the side of the square, you see how I could do that? But how would we make it look like this? How could you better describe it so that this would be what came out of the person drawing it? Draw a triangle on the square. Draw a triangle? On the square. On the square. Does that make sense? Because I drew a triangle on the square, right? How else could we do it where we get it to look like this? Draw a triangle on the left side of the square and walk it up. So, come on up and... So, grab a marker. So, draw a triangle on the left side of the square. Yes. And what were the last words you had? While combining it. While combining it. Okay. So. so while combining it, do you think anybody else might come up with some different drawing? They might come up with a different drawing, right? So you want to think about how exactly can you say that? Draw a square, right, with a triangle on the left side combining it. Would that be combining them? It could be, right? And it's getting closer to what we want, but that's what I want you guys to do. So you're trying to think of, all right, I've got some shapes, and I want to describe them so that somebody will draw exactly what I'm looking at. And when we come back, we'll see how the kids do with this exercise. And there we go. A big thanks to all the students out there in West Boron. We had a great time visiting with those students. Hey, we do have phone tutors available until 5.30 this afternoon. We're going to have Bella do a little bit more work. We've got another person we're going to visit on the phone lines. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to head back out to the Boys and Girls Club and see how they're working with that activity and Mary Lou. We are back live at the Boys and Girls Club on Niles Street. And today, the name of the game is... Do that! Yes, but what are we working on? 
When they went to break, we weren't quite done yet with our problem, but we have finished, yes? Yeah. Okay, so let's start with this group. Can you kind of explain to us how you got at your answer? Okay, so we just counted all the boxes, then we got 156. So then we, we checked their answer by multiplying 12 times 13, and we got 156. What is this method called, Isaac? Standard algorithm. Can you quickly show us how to do standard algorithm? What did you do first? So I multiplied um, 2 and 3, and it got 6. Then I multiplied 3 and 1, then it equals 3. Then I annexed to 0. Why? Why is that 0 there? What does that represent? Um, does it represent the tens position because that one is in the tens position? Yes. Yes, very good. Then I multiplied one times two, then I got two. Then one times one equals one. Then I added all them up and got 156. Very good. Okay, you ladies did something different. You went on a different pathway, correct? So what did you do? So we did the same thing as the other group, but we did circles and when we were done making the circles we uh, we made groups of two and we added them together we got tw uh, 26 and then we added two number two numbers and we got 52 and then there was one left over 52 so we added 52 plus 52 which is 104 and we added 52 to that so it's 156. Very good and you guys even went a different route correct? Explain what you did. We made 12 big circles, and inside them there's 13, 13 dots. So we counted two groups, and we got 25, 26. Then we added 26, 26 equals 52, 26 for, equals 52. Um, we added both of them, and it equaled 104. So we had two more 56 left, so we added 104. and. 206 equals 130, and then 130 um, plus 26 equals 156. Very good. Even though we all went different routes, did we all get the same question? Yeah. Uh, answer, yes. I should yes. say. Yes. We did. So are, does this show that there's many ways to solve a problem? Yes. yes. And remember, multiplication is just repeated. Addition. Put this paper underneath and let's get a clean one. Okay, and I'm going to show you even another way to solve, and it's almost, it goes kind of with this, it kind of goes with the standard algorithm, but I'm going to write it out for you. Here, we're going to take even a bigger number, and we are going to write on our paper 32 multiplied by 24. Can everybody write 32 multiplied by 24 on your paper, okay? At the top, write it at the top. 32 multiplied by 24. We're gonna use place value. We all know what place value is, right? So tell me, real, real quick, the three and the two. What place value is this two and this three in? What is the what? Ten, ten, ten. Ten. So what is the two and the four in? One. One. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to create a box. Okay. Oh, create a box a little bit lower. I should have created mine a little bit lower. Wait, watch what I'm going to do first before you do this. The three, gentlemen, watch. Hold on, watch. We're going to put 30. 30. Why did I put 30 there? Because it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's in a 10. And then what am I going to put here? A 2. Very good. Because it's in the? 1. one space. What am I going to put right here? 40. 20. Ah, uh, not 40. 20, 20, 20. 20 because it's in the? 10 space. And the? 4. Because it's in the? 1 space. Okay, create your box for me. There you, there you go. If you need to see it, I'll leave it in the middle. Okay, we got it? And what do we need right here? Uh, let's, let's do multiplication. How many of you know how to do this box? 
Talk it with your group. Go. Oh. <gasps> what type of model is this? An area model. Very good, Isaac. So we look, multiply these two and then these two. Okay, explain. Start talking. How are we going to solve this? Okay. How are we going to solve this? So we solve this by multiplying each number. Okay. One by one. So we start there. So like 20. 20 multiplied by 30 is 600. Look, look, look. What are we doing here? Look, 2 times 2? Is what? 4 add up? Plus the 0. Plus the 40. There you go. Okay, now where are you going to go? You got the top row. Well, how am I going to get this answer? That's right. Oh, is it 60 or 600? 100. Because how many zeros do we have here? Two. Two. So here, what is three multiplied by four? Very good. Now, what are you multiplying last? Two to six. Okay. What are we now going to do? Add all of the numbers together. Okay. So they're going to continue with, I think, what is this called again? Um, an area model. An area model. And when we come back, they're going to have the answer to this, and we're going to have do another type of multiplication problem with multi digits. So we're going to head back to the studio Why these amazing students continue on with their problem. We're ready. All right, thanks for that, Mary Lou. We'll let the amazing students at the Boys and Girls Club keep working on that. And right now we have the amazing Bella in studio with us. And she's been working on multiplication also. You did the standard algorithm and then you did the area model that they're working on, right? Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. We have another problem for you. Over to the board, young lady, and I'll go ahead and read it for you. Kay. So this is one of your word problems. Mm -hmm. This one says, a young snake measures 0 0.23 meters long. Mm hmm. Good start. During the course of his lifetime, he will grow to be 13 times his current length. Ooh, that was a dead giveaway right there, huh? What will his length be when he's full grown? Now, why like are you it. multiplying those all of a sudden? Because it says times, <laughs> so I'm guessing it's going to do something about multiplying something. That's right. And I'm going to put a little M in here for you so we don't forget that's meters. Okay. Okay. Do you have a brand new way to show us? Are you going to do the old area method or you just want to do it the long way? What do you think? I think I'm going to do the long way. Okay. I'll give you a little bit of room there. Go for it. Okay. So you want to do three times three. Yep. Which is nine. Okay. And then you do three times two, which because you go across, yep. which is six. Good. And then you add the point, oh. the dot, I should yeah. say. You want to do that now, huh? So you just, I want to do it now so you don't forget. Okay. So you All right, know. Let me see before. what you're going to do next. Then I would times these two uh -huh. and pretend those dots aren't there. Oh, I see. Okay. Which is zero. Okay. Oh, I see. So you got a three times a zero there. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Good start. What's next? Then this would go into an X and then turn into a zero. Mm -hmm. So bring that zero down. Yep. Put it there. Good. And then I'll do one times three, which is three. Good. Um, one times two, which is two. Mm-hmm. Good. And then I'm going to add my dot. Oh, you're going to add away over there, huh? Mm-hmm. Wow. Because Why are you adding away over there? Because I added a zero. Because instead of this going down, mm -hmm. I don't really need that anymore. So I'm making it go into a zero and bring it down and then start adding. Wow. Wait, multiplying. Okay. Let's see what happens at the very end here. And then I do one times zero and turns out to be zero. Okay. And then you add them. Add them all together. All right, mm -hmm. give me some more room and hopefully we can get this to not have quite so many dots in there. Okay. All right, so tell me about this problem here. It looks like we have all kinds of stuff. You didn't make this into a decimal. You got a decimal right here. So we have a decimal <laughs> here. You have a decimal there. Mm -hmm. I'm really curious what you're going to do here because you put your decimals in already. I've seen this problem done before where you put the decimal in at the end, but I've never seen it done this way. So let me see what you're going to do next. So I'm going to do 
the same way, but it's okay. going to be a little confusing. So you do 9 plus 0, which turns into a 9. I like that step. All right. 6 plus 3 equals 9. That's a good one, too. Another one. Good. Another 9. And then since there's a bigger number, I'm going to add the dot at the end. All right. You show me what to do here, and then we'll okay. see if it makes sense at the end. Since this is supposed to be right here, yeah. which I didn't mean to do, it's here, and you're going to do these two yep. because they're in the same spot. Add them together. Which is two. Good. Zero so where does that is decimal two. go at the very end of the problem? It's going to go right down there. Oh, my goodness. So let's go back and look at the beginning here, right? Okay. Tell me how many decimal places you have in this problem at the very beginning. Like all, all of in them In the whole together? problem. That's right. Um, five. Decimal places. Numbers after the decimal. How many do you uh, have? Two. You have two. And so a nice general rule in math is if you look at a multiplication problem like that and you look to see how many decimal places you have in the problem, that's probably how many you're supposed to have in the answer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I like that you did that here. It was interesting. I kind of was watching you there and seeing how it was going. It went pretty well. And then you moved one over here and this one didn't quite work, but I think everything will work out nicely if you just do this. If you wanted to have that decimal here, because this has two decimal places, this has two decimal places, and you can bring it straight down, oh. I think that's probably going to be the best way to do it. All the numbers yeah. you did were wonderful, but I think that decimal needs to go after the two nines, or before the two nines, or however you want to say that. If we were going to set it up, we're not going to do this problem, but I want you to tell me, if we were going to do an area model, okay, and we have this problem here, Let's break down the 13. That's pretty easy. We'll do it on the left hand side. What do we put here? Okay, we put the 10. Okay, a 10. And what do we put here? Just put the a 3. Down. Okay. What if we broke down 0.23? How do we do that? Uh huh. Making you think, huh? Well, I let's see. Would, what if it was just 23? What we'll would go put here? 20. Uh huh. 20. On that side, and then 3. And then 3. Side. But it's not 23. It's 0.23, right? Mm -hmm. So remember, that has two decimal places we got to have two decimal places here. This one would be like that. How do we make the three into two decimal places? I would say just add a zero. That's it. You got it. So it goes right there. So if you were going to break down the 0.23 into two different pieces and do your area model like you did at the beginning, mm -hmm. you would do it just like this. The whole number would be no problem. The but the decimal would work out pretty well. And if you got all four things and added them up, you make a wise guess for me. What would they add up to? Oh, you're psychic. 2.99. That's exactly it. You're a genius. Nice job on that one. I like that. Nice problem right there. So you see that snake would be 2.99 meters right there. Hey, you know what? We're going to go back to the phones right now. And Rosemary, how are you this afternoon? Hello, Rosemary. Hello. And you're at Stern Middle School also, correct? Yeah. And what grade are you in? Seven. All right. As soon as you're ready, let's hear the math problem that you're working on. Okay. Nick was riding on his bicycle when he saw a strange animal in the park. He noticed that the animal had five babies with it, each one looking like the parent was staring back at him. The strangest thing about these critters was that each had three eyes on their heads. How many eyes in all did Nick see staring at him? Oh my goodness, what a great problem. <laughs> okay, so I just started drawing pictures while you were giving us the problem there. And you've got three minutes. Okay. A lot so, of threes, three minutes. A lot of threes. Here we go. <clears throat> I just started drawing a picture, and so what I did is, who's the person in the story again? Nick. Nick, and he saw an animal. So I put an A in the middle. Nick saw this whole group of animals in the, in the park, right? So here he goes. There's an animal in the middle, and there's five little babies, right? And so all I do is put the A in the middle and put like a little sun with five little rays of light going out. And each of those little animals had three eyes. And so I put three in each one of those. Sometimes it really works out well if you draw a picture. I think that's kind of a neat deal. Now, here's a good question for you. How many eyes does the original animal have? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree with you. That's a tough question, right? But let's look at what yeah. that question says. Because the story says that each one of the small animals looks exactly like the parent. Isn't that what it says? 
Yeah. Yeah. So if it looks exactly like the parent, and the, all the little ones have three eyes, how many eyes does the big parent does the parent have? Three. Three. There you go. Good. So sometimes we got to look back, and we're not always looking for a number. We're looking for the words that help us to figure out how to solve this problem as far as what the other animal looks like. Now, if you wanted to have a lot of fun with this problem, you could just draw all the pictures. That'd be a good time too. Draw a bunch of animals with three eyes. But we're gonna see if we can solve the math part. So the picture that I've drawn here is an A in the middle and a bunch of threes surrounding it. And now that A has a three by it as well. Okay, so can you add up all the threes? How many threes do we have total in this problem? Um, total in the family? Yeah, how many people, or how many total animals are in the family? Six. Six, good. So if we write the number three, six times, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we add them all together, how many eyes do you get? Eighteen. Eighteen eyes, all right. Is there a faster way that we could do this one? Six times three. Six times three, I like that too. That makes it a little bit easier. So we could do six times three. Is there any other way that you want to go about working on this problem? I mean, those, those ways certainly work, but is there any other idea that you had that you might want to do to solve this problem? We always like to check it another way if we can. No. Okay. Well, I, I was thinking that if you looked at each individual animal and you lined them all up, you could count them one by one, right? You could count the three on each individual animal and then also the, the one for the parent. But it looks to me like 18 eyes is going to work. Now normally, here's a question for you, normally 18 eyes wouldn't be for six animals. If you were looking at a regular animal, what would 18 eyes usually give us? Like say a How cat. How many animals? How many animals would we have if you had 18 eyes, 18 cat eyes looking at you? How many cats would you have? Um, eight. One more? Nine. Nine, there you go, that's right, because most cats, if they're not from this strange woods, have two eyes, right? So you, you, normally we look for a nine, but in this case we have six. Nicely done. Congratulations, Rosemary, on that problem, as well as receiving yourself a ticket to the Kern County Fair. So congratulations on that. We certainly hope you do have a fun time at the fair. I see an animal with three eyes. I'm not going to count all the <laughs> eyes. I'm just leaving. Right now we're going to go one more time out to the Boys and Girls Club, see how they're doing with Mary Lou. We are back live at the Boys and Girls Club on Niles Street, and we have been dealing with multiplication. Yes? Yes! Um, and so when we last left, they were finishing their problem, which uh, again, Isaac is called a what? Area model. And Edwin, what do you call it? A uh, window strategy. Okay, what answer did we all get, everybody? 768. All right. So again, with this model, it's another way to do multiplication, yes? Yes. Okay, so we have a repeated uh, addition, which is showing pictures and doing groups. And now we have another type of model, which really is place value, yes? Yes. So we use place value to do that. Again, we do our tens first, and then we multiply over here, yes? Yes. And then we go with our, our tens, our 30 times 4, and then we have our 2 times 4, which is 8. You guys ready for the trick? Yes. yes. So we know standard algorithm, yes? yes? Yes. Okay, well, this is a type of algorithm, but it's a trick. So, on your paper, what I would like you to write. Uh, well, this one I'm going to do first. Okay, well, go ahead and write it. Let's do 33 multiplied by 21. Okay, everybody write it. Everybody's doing it on their own. So everybody write 33 multiplied by 21. Yep, everybody. Yeah, you could turn it on that or turn this over. You could turn it over if you want. Yep, you're gonna do it on your own too. Okay, here we go. Now, we are going to do, watch me, three lines. Okay, do you guys see what I'm doing? Three lines. Equals. Do your equal sign and do three lines. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to multiply our tens. So we are going to multiply three multiplied by two. What's three multiplied by two, everybody? Six. Six. Okay. Next, I'm going to multiply my ones. Don't jump ahead of me. I'm going to multiply by my ones, which is three multiplied by one, one which is, but look where I put it. 
I put it on the last number. Okay? So again, we started with our tens, and then I did my ones. Now, this is kind of mental math. I am first going to multiply the outside numbers. Watch. Three multiplied by one. What's three multiplied by one? Three. three. Okay, watch, watch what I do here. Then I'm going to multiply the inside numbers. What's three multiplied by two? Five. Three multiplied by two? Six. Six. I'm going to add these two numbers together. What's three plus six? Nine. We just got our answer. Can I do standard algorithm? Now I want you to do standard algorithm to check it. Look at these guys. You guys are going fast with your standard algorithm. Did we get it? Yes. <coughs> yes? yes. Did we get 693? Yes. yes. How cool is this method? Awesome. Very cool. Amazing. Why do you think it works? Because place value. Why? Because, yes, because of place value. You ready to try one more on your own? Yeah. Yes. <gasps> do we have time? Yes. Ready? Yes. yes. Okay, let's see how quickly you guys can do this. 12 multiplied by 14. We have one minute. Let's see how quick. I give you six seconds. Mm -hmm. Yep. Do we get it? As you guys are finishing up. I just want to thank you. You guys have been absolutely amazing today. And it is always great fun coming out here to the Boys and Girls Club on Nile Street and kicking off our season every single year. And you guys have been wonderful. Let me know, has anybody got my answer yet? Got it. You get 168? Yep. 168. Yep. 168? Yeah. We did it. Yeah. You guys are multiplication amazing. Yeah. All right, that does it for us here at the Boys and Girls Club on Nile Street, and we're going to send it back to the studio. All right, thanks for that, Mary Lou, and thanks to all of the students out at the Boys and Girls Club there at the main site over on Niles today. Always enjoy going out to the Boys and Girls Club, the various sites throughout Kern County. We do have phone tutors available until 5.30. We want to say thank you for Bella coming in this afternoon. Did you have a good time? Yes. Well, you know what? You received a, uh, a little assortment of gifts, and one of them is a meal at Chick-fil-A. So we want to say thank you to Chick-fil-A, and we hope that you enjoy that. And we have a uniform for you. So we'll go ahead and turn this way so maybe they can see that on camera, one of those right there. So you wear that. And until we meet again, continue to do the math. Major support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, California Resources Corporation, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, and the Kern High School District with additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. <laughs>